But one down and eight more to go. Regular season events in the 2018 Bassmaster Elite Series. This is the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Elite on Grand Lake of the Cherokees in Oklahoma. Let's take a look at this extraordinary playing field here, one that's been a favorite of the Bassmasters through the years. Here in Northeast Oklahoma, the Grand Lake of the Cherokees been around for about 60 years. Of course, it has seen some Bassmaster Elite Series events back in 2006 and 2007. But look at this day one here, and a guy, I won't say fresh from his victory at Lake Martin because that was a while ago, but Takahiro Amori trying to make it two victories in a row with the lead on day number one. Day number two would belong to this man, Tennessee's Brandon Lester, still angling for his very first victory on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Tommy Sanders here with Davey Height, and Davey Grand is known as a place where you can kind of pick the surroundings yeah. you want to fish in, pick the situation, and Brandon has picked a pretty specific one. Yeah, getting off to a great start on day two. Caught 17 pounds in about the first hour, pitching a creature bait, and then he settled in with a spinning rod in his hand, fishing a wacky worm, fishing very slowly just outside of where you can see the males up on the bed, catching these bigger females. Fishing painfully slow, but it's worked out good for it. Needs a monster day to take the lead. Needs 25, four, five fish. 26 pounds, three ounces. 26 pounds, three ounces. And Brandon Lester stomps a mud hole in them. Dude, I don't even know what to say right now. Sometimes, the heavens open up and the good Lord just shines down on you, man. I feel like that guy was me today. I, every move I made, everything I did, it was just right. You know, I had like 17 pounds by 7.30 this morning. And, and when you know you're going to make it to the third day and you're going to get paid, you can settle down and, you know, and do your job a lot more efficiently. Well, Brandon Lester with the lead after two days, but not clear of the pack. How about the guy right behind him? Kevin Van Dam, over 20 pounds both of the first two days. Of course, Kevin Van Dam won this event back in 2007. Yeah, Kevin's getting it done. Nothing comes easy on the Bassmaster Elite Trail. Brandon had a great day, and I know he'll be there on Sunday also. But Kevin Van Dam just right behind you, fishing a jig and a square bill crankbait. When he can get really dialed in on that square bill, you better look out. KVD has won a classic with it, and he'd like to win the Elite Series this week with it. Biggin. <laughs> That's what you want right there. God. Twenty pounds, ten ounces. KVD has his eyes on prize number twenty-five. Grand Lake is always exciting, but Grand Lake this time around with the spawn going on is truly larger than life. Welcome to the Toyota Bassmaster Studios, and the Bassmaster Elite Series. I'm Tommy Sanders with one of the all-time greats, Davey Height. And Davey, people were saying, well, with the spawn now, could, could guys get close to what Edwin caught in the Classic the last day, close to 29 pounds? Brandon Lester says, yeah, I'm going to open that door a little bit. He did that on day number two. And Kevin Van Dam has joined the fray as well. He's planted his flag in the ground, says, I'm in it to win it as well. Well, he didn't have the upper 20 pound stringer like Brandon Lester did, but Kevin Van Dam has caught 20 pounds the first two days, and he's doing a combination of things. He's fishing a jig and he's fishing a square bill crankbait. Kevin is always looking to be able to fish faster, to be able to wind a bait like a crankbait. And unfortunately, he's got the 1.5 go. going, and, and Kevin Van Dam has figured out the areas that these fish are setting up, pre-spawn, catching the bigger fish okay. just outside where those males are, and look out for him catching above 20 pounds the rest of the week. There are our top 12 after day number two, Lester and Van Dam at the top, some familiar names behind them, including Jacob Wheeler, and how about number five, Cliff Pace. All he ever did at Grand Lake was win a Geico Bassmaster Classic. That's uh, formidable to say the least. We're coming back with action from day number three at Grand Lake on the Bassmaster Elite Series when we return, so don't go away. That's what I've been looking for all day right there. Boom! The Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Elite at Grand Lake is brought to you by Mercury. Hook. Abu Garcia.
Humminbird. Bassmaster Elite Series stop number two at the Grand Lake of the Cherokees. Grove, Oklahoma, sort of a sort of ground zero for all the big time bass fishing tournaments here, a great host city. Going out of the Wolf Creek Landing here, and we're down to 50 anglers on this day. We started with 100 plus, and the spawn definitely going on, so those guys who had to go home are not happy. They think about what could happen to anyone on any given day out here. Boy, it is volatile out there. Brandon Lester has proved that on day number two, catching over 26 pounds of bass as we follow Brandon Lester God, into dang. day number three. And for him, he did not get that start he got on day number two. Dang it. Ah, dang it. Ah, dang it. One of the little spots, I guess. Well, that's a perfect spot to catch one on a spook. You got it. God dang it. Well, Anytime fish start coming up to spawn, there, there comes a point where you can catch them on top where it's always somewhere right around 60 degrees, somewhere right in there. On my Nico worm, I throw it on more main bank stuff. It started out pretty good. I had no great big ones. Not the start I had yesterday, but it's hard to expect the start that I had yesterday, especially when I'm fishing back through water that I caught them in yesterday. But. I'm about to go fish a pocket when I leave here. I'm gonna make a few more casts here and I'm gonna go fish a pocket that I didn't fish yesterday that I caught a big one out of the first day, so. It'll happen. Big. That's what I've been looking for all day, right there. Boom! Yes! Now we can start a big set. Yeah, well, nothing but small side stuff uh, earlier in the day for Brandon Lester, but now he says he gets to start a big side, but didn't quite get to where he got on day number two. 17 pounds and change for Brandon Lester on day number three. Let's check in with the main guy he's got pursuing him, Kevin Van Dam's been up over 20 pounds each day. Starts this day in second place and not too far back of Lester. Yeah, the big key for Brandon yesterday was catching that 17 pounds in the first hour. Kevin Van Dam is the only anger to this point. Every morning, all three mornings, he's been able to catch 18, 19, maybe even close to 20 pounds in the first hour. So Kevin is really getting dialed in with the square bill crankbait, fishing it in backs of pockets fishing it in transition banks leading into these places. He was using the jig and soft plastics just a little bit earlier in the week, but now he's dialed in with the square bill. Let's take a look at Kevin's record here on the Grand Lake of the Cherokees. Pretty good record, including a win at the 2007 Bassmaster Elite. The year before that, he finished top 25 and generally pretty great. 50th place back in 91. That had to be his rookie year, right, Davey? Yeah, that's a bad tournament for Kevin because he normally is in the top 10. Not many people think of a square bill as a bed fishing bait, but when they're just coming up like this, they'll, they'll react to it like that. I mean, they're not, I'm catching those females that are just hanging outside of them. Oh yeah. Here's a big one, great big one. He's under the cable. There's a good one. There we go. I mean, look at that. He smoked it. 
How many anglers have had nightmares about a situation like that? For Kevin Van Dam, no problem. A great day three. 42 pounds and nine ounces to start the day. He's looking for 19-1 to take the lead. 22 pounds, four ounces. 22 pounds and four ounces. And KVD is your brand new leader. Five official away from his 25th Bassmaster victory. Kevin Van Dam certainly has it going in that direction. The guy to beat as we get ready for the final day of competition on Grand Lake. Kevin Van Dam, three pounds ahead of Roy Hawks, sitting right where he finished in the last tournament at Lake Martin. So he has definitely made the biggest point splash of the year. More on that later, but a very impressive group of 12 will be going for it on the final day. Ready to go with the final day's fishing championship Sunday for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bass Master Elite Grove, Oklahoma, our host city on the Grand Lake of the Cherokees. We're down to 12 anglers on this final day. Greatest of all time, pretty much acknowledged by everyone, Kevin Van Dam with a three pound lead over Roy Hawk. And we see a lot of great anglers in that top 12. We can't keep our eyes off number 11, Jordan Lee, who just won his second Geico Bass Master Classic to get this year going. Don't forget about Brandon Lester, our leader from day number two. Brandon Lester is fishing what they call the baby pattern. He's a pretty happy guy. Things are going his way here in 2018. She is one month and I think three days old today. Her and mommy flew in last night to cheer daddy on and I'm sure happy they're here. <laughs> I'm fired up, man. Probably a little too fired up. I gotta, I gotta calm down a little bit, but uh, I need to just focus today and work hard. And, let the chips fall where they fall, you know. Here we go, leading them out seven times. Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year, Kevin Van Dam. The best thing about being in the lead going out on the final day is you get a smooth boat ride all the way to your first spot. You don't have to get all the boat wakes out there. That's, that's why you work hard to be in the lead going out. KBD enjoying that clean water ride out to his first spot of the day. Much anticipation, of course, everybody watching this one. KBD always draws a big crowd. And Davey, as we look at the distribution, when we had the full field, it was amazing how well placed they were all over this lake. Being a tournament angler, you love a fishery that you can spread out and do your own thing. Grand Lake of Cherokees is certainly one of those places that's good from one end to the other. These guys are fishing differently. Some of them are fishing more main lake, some back in pockets. You see Randall Tharp, he's got a stretch or two that he's really excited about today. Kevin Van Dam has gotten off to a good start the previous three mornings. Be real important to do that again on this final day. There we go, big in. Yep. There's a good start. <laughs> uh, so three and a half. Right where he's supposed to be. be. About six more, six pounders, I'll be happy. Yeah, in the afternoon, I just really got more dialed in where the fish stage up on coming in on these little turns and things like that, leading into these spawning pockets. And you gotta follow them back every day. So I'm fishing everything all the way to the backs of the pockets. But I mean, you have to fish everything, unfortunately, but I really focus on those areas and that's, that's where most of my bites have, have come. There you have it from Kevin Van Dam. He told you exactly what he's doing. He's using his side imaging, really dialing in on these transition spots that these fish are sitting on, working all the way back in the back of these pockets where some of the fish are still spawning, and then working his way out the other side. Well, we're gonna follow Kevin Van Dam now, sort of east and north of Mid Lake, right off the main lake there. That and a series of pockets he'll be covering today, trying to cover, as you say, Davey, a, a lot of ground. Let's take it out to Brandon Lester again, 26 plus on day number two and a drop in production on day number three. And Brandon Lester said that may be because I didn't fish new stuff. And so you expect today he's going to be looking at some places maybe he's only seen in practice, not fished in the tournament so far. But from the look of it, he's fishing very similar type spots where he scored big on day number two. 
Yeah, I came through here and practiced. I came around that dock and I saw all that brush right there. I was like, oh, might need to remember that spot. I got him digging. Get in here. Yes. Boom. That's why you get the old flipping stick out right there. <laughs> Pretty dang good. Like I made the right call. No X zone hog hunter. Just a big creature, mate. You know when fish are spawning, I feel like a big invasive bait like that just kind of gets them fired up. And I catch them on it post spawn too. Um, to be honest with you, I don't know really what they think it is. Maybe a big bluegill. That's why I put that chartreuse dye on the tails. But they like it, I can tell you that much. That's something a good friend of mine back home, he, uh, he got me flipping those big creature baits and during the spawn and post spawn. It works. Brandon Lester starting to get it going here on day number four. Certainly a guy with big plans for this day. This could be a big breakthrough in his Bassmaster Elite Series career. Brandon, of course, starting this day in third place. Kevin Van Dam with the lead and three pounds behind Van Dam to start this day. Roy Hawk, Roy Hawk fishing in only his second Bassmaster Elite Series event ever, but every one is totally impressed with this, uh, this rookie. <laughs> technically a rookie from out west, uh, Lake Havasu area, a rookie uh, in, in category only here on the Bassmaster Elite Series. He has a ton of experience, years on the water at the very highest level of bass fishing. So Roy Hawk comes here with plenty of preparation and a skill set which is very much suited to the Bassmaster Elite Series. How well has he adapted? Well, we have one event to look at, the only other event he's fished, Lake Martin. And how about this for a start to the Bassmaster Elite Series, a second place runner up finish to Takahiro Amori. Boy Hawk really likes Grand Lake. He says it reminds him of Lake Havasu back home and the many different environments where you can catch him and catch him very well. And there he is right there, basis of the, that second place finish and his good uh, performance so far here at Grand Lake has him, of course, atop the points board, Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year, Roy Hawk on top, ahead of Justin Lucas, Dean Rojas, and Brett Height. And today, he's got some important work to do, Davey. Well, coming into this event, we thought that a lot of guys would be fishing soft plastic. We've seen a little bit of that, but Kevin Van Dam and Roy Hawk certainly doing something different. Roy Hawk's throwing a spinnerbait, a three-quarter ounce spinnerbait, slow rolling, catching a lot of fish, very similar to Kevin, some pre-spawn, some spawning fish, and surprisingly, he said three-fourths of the fish he is catching or post-spawn. Number two. <laughs> Pounder. Roy Hawk getting going as well. Definitely need to keep our eyes on this guy throughout this final championship day. Roy Hawk, who started with almost 17, almost 20 on day two and 24 plus on day number three, definitely has it figured out here at Grand Lake. Is he going to be the one to challenge Kevin Van Dam? That fish right there cut his deficit by a single pound. Now he's only two pounds back of Van Dam with a lot of fishing time left on Championship Sunday. The Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Elite at Grand Lake is brought to you by Power Pole, Skeeter Boats, Yamaha, Toyota.
It's what they're shooting for right there. One of those blue trophies, very, very desirable items. It means a championship. From the Bassmaster Elite Series, the best anglers in the world, this is the Academy Sports and Outdoors. Bassmaster Elite Series, stop number two on Grand Lake of the Cherokees, about 45,000 acres of extremely fishable water here. It's a little bit, little bit lower than it would be normally for this time of year. And now we're gonna check in with Randall Tharp, another angler who had a tremendous day number three and some tremendous prospects today. Dude, I'm so excited about the day. I know I'm gonna have some opportunities today. I mean, I, I, I mean I'm around a lot of big fish. And, I mean, I know if I get in the right place at the right time, dude, you can catch, you know, high 20s really, really quick. Well, Randall's excited for good reason. He is known as one of the better power fishermen, and he said the water temperature has really changed a lot from the beginning of practice, low 50s, and now it's mid to upper 60s, and he's been catching some really good fish on a jig and a square bill late in the day. has really been good for him. He knows that that's the time he needs to be in his best area. It might take 27, 28 pounds for Randall to win this thing, but he certainly thinks he can do that. <sighs> A little better one. <clears throat> a lot of spinner baits inside this. Maybe the biggest spinner bait week ever on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Certainly working for Randall Tharp early on on Championship Sunday. Everybody pursuing this guy, Kevin Van Dam. You now find him in a place he really just checked out yesterday. Yeah, we're. Uh in this area here, the wind kind of blowing in at more of a flatter pocket that's got some good ledge rock in it. I had a couple of good bites here in the afternoon yesterday, so. Probably the most important thing for me all week has been um, the Lake Master mapping. Most of the fish that I'm catching are on a bank transition that's underwater that you don't see looking at the bank. On top of that, you know, I've spent a good bit of time side imaging a lot of this stuff to know where that good ledge rock is. I mean, you look up on the bank up there up high, it's that flat rock and they, they love to spawn on that. I can pretty much look at a cove and see how the contour lines are on the Lake Master and know if it has the right ingredients. There we go. Good one, big one. Solid. Solid. We're not going fast, but we're working on it anyways. It's a fresh one, you can see he's white in color. And... Well, we're witness to it, the big man in the sport of fishing, figuring out a way to fish the spawn better than anyone else on this particular week on Grand Lake. And Davey does it not by looking for these opportunities to see them actually sitting on a bed and spawning, but putting the whole package together, figuring out the places where they're going to travel, where they're going to hang, actually where they're going to spawn. So right now, we'll take a look at our Yamaha Unlock the Lake and maybe explain the finer points of this very, very effective strategy. Well, you hit the nail on the head, Tommy. Figuring out what these fish are doing, whether they're pre-spawn, spawning, or post-spawn is, is a big key when you're trying to pattern fish, and that dictates what part of these pockets and what part of the coves that you're going to actually fish. This time of year, you can have all three going on, and you almost have to decide which one are you going to sight fish for the tournament? Are you going to target the, the pre-spawn fish or the post-spawn? Kevin did all three with one bait, a square bill crank bait. You look at these places he was fishing, he was fishing pockets, but he was able to cover so much water fishing his crank bait, fishing a lot faster than most guys. He's fishing a jig a little bit early on, but once he figured out that he could catch these good quality fish on this crank bait, he was able to cover water. That's always been a big key for Kevin Van Dam's success. 
and he knew what to look for. Look at his lake master map here. You got the contour lines. He wanted these flatter areas, these transition areas where these fish stage going and coming. And even some of the, the shallower areas, we saw him catching fish behind docks. Those fish were actually spawning. So Kevin was using all of his tools available, his side imaging, his lake master map. And the big key for him was he was able to target all three stages of these fish and catch all three. That's what gave him the victory. The pattern that I've been, and that's kind of what I was banking on all week, is trying to focus on these little kind of staging areas outside of these spawning pockets where these females will set up, you know, I mean, just outside of a male even, you know, even in the back of a pocket, I can throw this crankbait and I'm throwing it out in front of, you know, the, where the beds are at. A lot of the beds I've seen are right up in the dirt. Good one. That's the one we need right there. There we go. It's five. <laughs> not a real big one, but a, not a good one. Well, you just about knew Kevin Van Dam wasn't going to be one of those uh, so-called pocket peekers <laughs> that you see at, at spawning tournaments. And the same is true for this guy, Roy Hawk, as well as it any coincidence, they're both one and two in this tournament. He's got it dialed in on our Skeeter Taste the Bait. This is a Pepper Custom spinner bait and uh, just a you know, tandem willow leaf deal. And what I've done with it, it's kind of a bluegill shad kind of in-between type of tone. What I've done is put a, another fine material skirt underneath it. It's got a nice big profile with two skirts on it. And uh, it's got each little tentacle because there's a fine material and a heavier material. Each one has kind of a, you know, a little different action to it, so to speak. As this bait comes through the water, spinner baits tend to hang with the hook kind of pointing down. Well, with the material, that all lays back like that as it's going through the water, where a piece of plastic could actually lay down with the shank of the hook. This material all flows natural and covers the hook as you're reeling it through the water. Been working so far. That is some true specialty spinner bait info right there from the great Roy Hawk. Yeah, it has been working. Take a look at his progression through this event. Almost 17 on day one, almost 20 on day two, and look at day number three. Punching up against 25 pounds, working for Roy Hawk. Yeah, he's got a spinnerbait working really well for him. A three-quarter ounce spinnerbait. He showed you all the goods. He's slow rolling it. He's got a bank that's been very good to him in the afternoon. There we go. <laughs> Come on! Ah, finally got a good one. Roy Hawk improving each and every day. Big challenge today. Catch Kevin Van Dam. Roy Hawk through the course of this tournament has been pretty much sharing water and successfully sharing water with the angler from Minnesota, Seth Fighter. This angler with two Bassmaster victories who's really come into his own in the Elite Series in the last couple of years. He's been doing a great job this week. Sometimes you just need to grind and try to have a good finish. Well, Seth Fighter has done a terrific job, not fishing far from the takeoff. Him and Roy Hawk both moving up each and every day. Sometimes just a top five finish can be a great event for any Elite angler. Biggin, biggin. Yep. There we go. Mm-hmm. Told you we was about to catch him. Come out of there. Nice and around that dude. A little 
llama party, get the morning started. <laughs> Been a little slow grind, but um, none of my mornings with the exception of day one really started off that hot. I'm not worried about that. We're just fishing for five anyways. So just try to get five big bites and get them in the boat. It's gonna happen. We're catching 20 plus today, no doubt. Even though we need about 30 to win. So, probably not gonna happen, but we're gonna have fun trying anyways. Good week for Seth Fighter, and obviously he's gonna make the best of this day on Grand Lake Final Day Championship Day. The leaderboard right now, Kevin Van Dam marches on, extending his leap over Roy Hawk. Will he get over 80 pounds? More fishing to come. We are in Oklahoma for the second stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Elite at Grand Lake of the Cherokees. And six seconds is back. And this week, we're playing the rhyme game. James Elam representing Oklahoma in a big way this week. One of your forefathers here in Oklahoma, of course, Tommy Biffle. So we're asking anglers. Six seconds, have you seen it? I was afraid he was gonna do that crap. Yeah. A lot of people are, but you, you have no idea how exciting it is for us to talk to the one Tommy Biffle, because this morning we were asking people to pay tribute to you. Give us as many words as you can that rhyme with Biffle in six seconds, go. Biffle, Riffle, Niffle, Niffle, and running, 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 running. Is that six seconds? You nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> 10 to 1 fake to real word ratio in those answers there on six seconds we gotta love that fishermen are creative and biffle tommy biffle right now look at the leaderboard and we find him in second place now roy hawk is in third both of them chasing kevin van dam we're gonna idle down and then come back up this area here we've got a real steep bank that comes up against all these docks along here it feels like a really good area i've never fished here before but we're gonna spin back around back towards this little uh, bridge we're gonna work up towards the wind just so I can be a little more thorough. I, I, I'm pretty confident that we're gonna catch something through here. So we're gonna work it over pretty good and uh, see if we can get after it. While you're on the water, you always wanna be conscientious of the wind, whether you wanna be in it, out of it, upwind or downwind. When you're slow rolling a spinnerbait, like Roy Hawk is doing here, you really need to be able to make contact with the bottom. And, and fishing into the wind, you can control the boat a little better, make the cast you want to make, and, and reel that bait along really slow so you can tell what's on the bottom. What I'm doing here is like, I've never fished here before. And so as I'm coming up to these docks, I'm throwing a cast out in front of it and letting it sink down and I'm feeling for where a brush pile might be. So as I'm coming along these new ones, I'll take a cast out, feel for where a brush pile is, make three or four casts right there, and then run down the sides of the dock. Also, too, when you're coming in and casting on the side of a dock, a lot of times the people will put the brush pile like a small cast away from the dock, like as if they're fishing off the dock, you know. They, and some of them are right on the dock bolt. So you got to kind of feel around and, and figure out where they're sitting. There we go. Nice. 
small keeper. Thankful to get it though. Number four. Roy Hawk one to a limit now, but some of those are gonna have to go. He's gonna have to upgrade Cull in order to get more weight and have a chance to catch Kevin Van Dam. Also chasing Kevin Van Dam. Starting this day in the top five now in seventh place, Seth Fighter. Seth Fighter's having a really good tournament for the practice he had. He said, I only had six yep. bed and fish to go to the first day of the tournament. I thought I'd have a terrible tournament. Well, he's grounded out and doing really, really good. He's flipping a tube, a four inch tube with a four alt wide gap BMC hook, just covering a lot of water, fishing everything he sees. And every once in a while, he comes across a big one. Begging, begging. Oh God, oh God, oh God, come here, come here. Oh God, straight begging, dude. I mean, I'm big. Come here, come here. Oh my God. This is the worst fish landing ever, but we got him. Oh, how you like that? Big old retread, Fred. There's a six pounder. Boom. Llama Dama. Mmm. Give me some, dude. Worst fish landing ever, but had too much string out. He was whooping me. We got him, though. Oh, that was a good big one for Seth Fighter right there. Very, very important. Meanwhile, Kevin Van Dam still holding down the lead here, still trying to get it up to 80 pounds or more. Kevin Van Dam, look at if he wins here, this will be the fifth in a series of lakes he's won multiple events on. Kentucky Lake, the Delta, including two classics down there, the Alabama River, all memorable to St. Lawrence where he notched a win just last year in 2017. Kevin Van Dam would love to make it two here on Grand Lake. Kevin still got the lead, but it does not feel the same for him this morning. He has not had the start he's had the previous three mornings. It's not going the way I've wanted. It's definitely, uh been a, a grind. I fished a lot of good stuff and have not been able to make it work, but you know, I keep trying. I know these fish are changing. More of them are moving on beds and these fish still got to be coming up. I'm trying to fish some of this water that's a little colder where they're just going to come up close to the main lake like this and be big fresh stages. Here we go. Biggin. Giant, but a night, uh, dang. Uh, that'll help. God, I, th I seen him flash. I'm not so sure there weren't two. That'll help, though. No question. Good, timely catch right there. That ought to help his mental attitude a little bit if it needs helping Kevin Van Dam over 80 pounds at this point, which has given him a little bit more of a cushion against the rest of the field. Great battle going on right now between Roy Hawk and Tommy Biffle for second place. And we all know the potential, what could happen anytime on Grand Lake. Got to watch this last bit of fishing closely. The Academy Sports and Outdoors Past Master Elite at Grand Lake is brought to you by Triton Boats, Berkeley, Minkota, Nitro Boats. The hourglass is getting down to the last few grains here on the Grand Lake of the Cherokees and our fantastic host city of Grove, Oklahoma for this Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Elite Event. Kevin Van Dam in the lead, one of his pursuers. Leader after two days of fishing, Brandon Lester. And Brandon still trying to get it going, get it ramped up on this final day. Somebody got a little wild with their wacky worm. We've all been there. I ain't gonna laugh at him. Man, I ought to be getting bit right here. 
I think Van Dam paid the weatherman off. I changed it up this morning. As you can see, I do not have a spinning rod in my hand. I made that flip, I was like, man, if it's five pounds or less, we'll be in good shape. <laughs> if not, it might get interesting, but you gotta try it. That's a good call. Brandon Lester mixing it up on this final day. Fishing soft plastic, but fishing behind these docks. We've seen a lot of guys catch fish behind these docks. They're set up to spawn back there. Absolutely, yeah, they've all gotten better at fishing around cables and, and big old struts like that, that's for sure, during the course of this week. For the full field, Roy Hawk, certainly been one of the standouts throughout the field today. Started in second place, now he finds himself in third place behind Tommy Biffle. Of course, everybody, Jason Kevin Van Dam. Yeah, overall, it's been a real grind for me today. I caught one nice one and uh, have four small ones right now. Glad to ha at least have a limit, but man, it's been been a lot tougher than I expected. With uh, thought with the wind, you know, it might be a little bit better with the spinner bait, but it hasn't been for me. I'm sure somebody's whacking them right now, and uh, they're biting somewhere. That'll help. Moving up a little. <laughs> Roy Hawk moving up with the upgrade. He's going to have to upgrade just about every other fish in his life. Well, if he's going to have a prayer of running down Kevin Van Dam. Kevin Van Dam, as we said, he's got it up over 80 pounds as we get out to KVD. And again, he doesn't know what the rest of the field's doing. I still feel like he doesn't have this put away in his mind. Much slower morning for Kevin today, but he's positive. One of his biggest assets is his positive mental attitude. He knows he's doing the right thing. It's just a matter of time before he comes across the right fish. You just gotta be positive and keep moving on. You know, you can't question your sanity. I can't give up what I've done all week. Heck, I've caught him on its slick, calm, sunny, cloudy cold it's every dang day until today and I'm just one one big one short of of having a solid day it's not supposed to be this hard oh there's one big one real big one <laughs> There's a game changer. One hook in the nose. There's a good one. How about that for an upgrade? <laughs> <laughs> that changes things. Let's roll him through from Kalamazoo, Michigan, Kevin Van Dam! Boom shakalaka, ch -ch 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 giant bass! Starting today with 64 pounds, 13 ounces. Tommy, Kevin get side by side. Two great friends and two incredible competitors get side by side over here. As we look at the scales, we're looking for 13.6. 18 pounds, seven ounces. 18 pounds, seven ounces. And Kennedy becomes the only man alive with 25. Kind of hard to wrap your head around, but 25, that number represents Kevin Van Dam pretty much lap in the field in history in the sport of professional bass fishing. Just an incredible accomplishment and not done yet.
He's not done yet, Tommy. It's really incredible what Kevin Van Dam has done through his whole career. If you look at it, he is a fierce competitor, a very hard worker, and I think he's just as good as he was when he was a rookie. Most people start tailing off after having the years on the trail like he has all this time. Kevin Van Dam has dominated our sport like no one before, and I'm not so sure anyone after him will do what Kevin Van Dam has done. Remarkable guy with another remarkable victory. We'll see you next time right here on the Bassmaster Elite Series.